Hosea chapter 61, as well as Acts chapter 19, Isaiah chapter 61, as well as Acts chapter 19. Isaiah chapter 61 is where we'll start. We'll grab a couple in Acts chapter 19. We'll start. Thank you, sir. chapter 61 and then we'll run over to Acts chapter 19 starting in Isaiah beginning at the first verse you that have it should find these words the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound mm -hmm. to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God mm -hmm. to comfort all that mourn mm -hmm. to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes yes, sir. the oil of joy yes. for mourning the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness mm -hmm. that they might be called trees of righteousness yes, sir. the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified yes. and they shall build the old waste they shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste city and desolations of many generations. Yeah. Amen. 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 Acts chapter 19. God has a plan for his people. Yeah. Yeah. To build up the waste. Yeah. Yeah. To repair the desolations of many generations. Yeah, and he got a plan for how you're going to do it too. Amen. 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 Acts chapter 19. And it came to pass, beginning at verse 1, that while Apollos was at Corinth, mm -hmm. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came from Ephesus and finding certain disciples, uh -huh. he said unto them, Finding certain disciples, uh -huh. not heathens, not unbelievers, uh -huh. finding certain disciples. Yeah. He said unto them, yes. have you received the Holy Ghost uh -huh. since you believe? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's all. Uh -huh. all right. uh, you may be seated <laughs> in the presence of the Lord. Uh -huh. And for the next little while, I want to talk about living. In his presence. Living in his presence. At times past, we preach his presence is required. God didn't just create everything in life and then step away and leave it up to creation to find its way in or, or, or to find a way. To live on. Mm -hmm. Are you here? Yes, yes, Say God didn't just create everything. No, he didn't. Then step away and then let his creation mm -hmm. find its own way mm -hmm. or, or try to find a way to live on. Amen. But God provided an environment for everything to thrive mm -hmm. in that which he created. Destroy, pollute, or remove 
the proper environment of a thing, and that thing becomes an endangered species. Yeah. Or, or it learns mm -hmm. to adapt to the new environment mm -hmm. in order to survive. Yes, 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 yes. Listen to me, saints. I said if you remove the environment, mm -hmm. pollute the environment, mm -hmm. destroy, corrupt the environment in any way, that thing begins to die. Mm -hmm. Or it learns how to adapt mm -hmm. to the new environment. Mm -hmm. Have you know a lot of God's people learn and how to adapt? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh, my God. So Paul said, be not conformed to this world, right. but be transformed <laughs> by the renewing of your mind. Yes, sir. Yes. It accepts and embraces the new conditions and changes. Yes. Changes its own ways and conform to the ways of its environment. Yes. In our text, the Bible makes it clear that the Lord had a plan for the redeemed. Uh -huh. God said we would be trees of righteousness. Of righteousness. Yes. And they will be the plantings yes. of the Lord. Is that right? Yes. You who are the plantings of the Lord are set to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You, you're set to be a blessing. Yeah. That, that was God's intent for you from the beginning, to be a blessing. He didn't birth you into the earth realm just to find your way through life. You are the plantings of the Lord and you are set to be a blessing. Yes, Amen. Amen. He says you will, you, you will fix what destroyed many generations. Yes. So, so we don't just shake our head at the calamity and suck our teeth and and, 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 and ooh and ah about what's going on in the world. We are set to be a blessing. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. We will be the repair. Look at Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. Begin at that 11th verse, Isaiah 58, verse number 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. Mm -hmm. Now that's enough right there for me to shout. Yeah. Just know yeah. that God's going to guide me yeah. continually. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If I submit myself and give myself wholly to, I don't have to have no ups and downs, no ins and outs. I ain't got to go a little way and figure it out. The, the book says, and the Lord shall guide thee continually. Amen. Amen. And if I ever come down, I can read some more and shout about that too. And satisfy thy soul in drought. Amen. Amen. And may fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. And like a spring of water whose waters fail not. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and they shall be of thee, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. And thou shalt raise up the foundation of many generations. And thou shalt be called. Not a problem, but the repairers of the breach. Not holier than thou, but the restorer of the past to dwell in. Amen. I say, God said, you're going to be a blessing. You're going to be the repairers of the breach. You're going to restore the past for folk to dwell in. You're going to show them kingdom way. The kingdom way. You're going to show them that he the way, the truth, and the life. God got plans for you, kingdom child. Amen. I 
Bible says the redeemed is set to be yes. a blessing. Yes. Yes. Amen. Now, now, whether we are on our purpose or not, mm -hmm. you were set to be so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Amen. Whether we're on our purpose or not, mm -hmm. God had a plan for us and you were set to be so. Everything God intended for us to be and do, yes. he provided an environment yes. for us to thrive in yes. and to have great success. Yes. I said everything. Yeah. He provided an environment for us yeah. to be successful yes, and to thrive in all that he has called and set us to do. Yes. Yes. He provided an environment. Mm -hmm. An environment, an environment. Mm -hmm. Environment, by definition, means the surroundings or yeah. conditions yeah. in which a person, an animal, or a plant, a living thing, Lives and operates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Environment. It's the conditions in which living things live and or operate. Yes. Yes. And many people, based on how they operate, mm -hmm. or worry if they operate at all. Or how they live, or if they live, or how long they live, mm -hmm. have been labeled victims uh -huh. of their environment. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. But it, but it, but in our text in the in the in the sixty first chapter of Isaiah, mm -hmm. the Bible says, and 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 Jesus. In the, in the Gospels, the Bible says that Jesus went into the synagogue and opened the book and found the place where it was written of him. Yes, and the place that it was written of him is right here in, six, in the 61st chapter of Isaiah. And y'all remember, he began reading the Spirit of the Lord. is upon me. Amen. And he went on to talk about what was going to happen because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Did he do it? And he, and, he, and he talked about this third verse right here in the 61st verse of I, uh, chapter of Isaiah to point unto them that mourn in Zion mm -hmm. to give unto them beauty for ashes. Yes. Some of us can witness about what the Lord has done. Yes. Yes. The oil of joy for mourning. Mm -hmm. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness yes. that they might be called trees of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. Amen. The Lord did all of that so that we might be trees of righteousness. Amen. That, that, that's the supply we talk about in our vision. That every joint uniquely supplies. Mm -hmm. you, you're to be a tree of righteousness. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. That's your supply. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, you're to supply uh -huh. the world mm -hmm. with righteousness. Yes, yes, you remember, God destroyed the world with a flood. Yes. Save one family. Yes, mm -hmm. Let them off the boat mm -hmm. and said what last week? Mm -hmm. Be fruitful and multiply. And multiply yeah. and replenish, yeah. replenish, yeah. refill, yeah. refurnish yeah. the earth. Yeah. The earth re re replenish the earth with what? With what I just got? got I, I got rid of them because there was no righteousness. Yeah. <laughs> Their imagination, their thoughts were evil continually. That was when I created man, there was righteousness. Yes. Sin and disobedience began to get full. Uh, and God washed it out. Yeah, yeah. And he told the family, now you get on out here and you replenish. Yeah. <laughs> so it's up to us, y'all, yes. yes. to furnish society yeah. with righteousness. Yeah. Amen. You the help. 
Mm. I said you're the help yeah. that this world needs. Yes, you're the trees of righteousness. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Trees provide so much help. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They provide shade for them yeah. in the heat of the day. Yeah. All right. Amen. Yeah. Food and nourishment yeah. as they produce fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The leaves of the trees help you to stay alive because you breathe in oxygen and you put off carbon monoxide dioxide amen not monoxide dioxide amen and trees take in carbon dioxide and put off oxygen amen and we just keep reciprocating trees help us live Trees provide comfort and shade. Trees provide sustenance for living and life. And God says you will be trees of righteousness. You will, you, look, y'all, we're to be a forest of help up in here. Stand up. Everybody that's saved in this, in this house. Everybody that, that is under the blood. You just stand, look, look, you're just a forest of help. Trees. Of righteousness. And nobody should be without when all these tri the plantings yeah. of the Lord. Folks are walking here into a forest of hell. Yeah. Not just a little help here, a little help. A forest of hell. Yeah. Yes, sir. Trees. Trees. Yes, sir. Of righteousness. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Cause trees are everywhere. The Lord's love, truth, and power can be experienced and shared. We're to be fruitful. Yeah. And Malta, do you know some places where his love, his truth, and power can be in need to be shared? Yeah. Well, you're of the planting of the Lord. Yeah. Trees of righteousness. Plantings of the Lord. Yes. That's another part of our vision. Yes. Called together by divine purpose. Yes. Plantings of the Lord. Yes. You're not here by happenstance. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's no coincidence <laughs> that you're here. Amen. I'll help your neighbor. Tell him you're not a quinky thing. <laughs> you, you're not in the kingdom of God by happenstance. You are a planting of the Lord. Come on, help me preach this. Elaine. <laughs> When you plant something, you intend for it to be there. You want it to be there. You know the help and the beauty is going to provide. I, it, it, the other plants don't want it there. It don't matter. The one that planted it, they, come on, come on. The one that planted this garden. Amen. The one that owned this land. This is my house. This is my land.
Psalm 92. Hey, Amen. I said the trees of righteousness. And in Psalm 92, verse 12, the Bible says, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. You are trees of righteousness. The plantings of the Lord and you that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. You won't be hindered. You won't be shut down. You won't be shut out. In the courts yes. of our God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. And so, and so, environment mm -hmm. is of the utmost importance. Uh -huh. yeah. Does anybody plant anything? No, the environment. I said, help me preach this, Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> And by planting anything, know the proper environment for that thing to flourish. And God knows the environment. The environment is of the utmost importance. Not only does God say that you should, or what you should do, and what should take place, and when it will take place. Or how it will take place. Yeah. But God determines where. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He determines what and how. Mm -hmm. And where. Yeah. My God. All that comes from God. The who, what, why, when, and where. Mm. Where. Yeah. You don't get to determine the where. Mm -hmm. You want to be the who. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You want to do the what? <laughs> you want to know how? Uh -huh. And you want to know when? Uh -huh. But you don't get to determine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, look, look at Deuteronomy chapter 16. Deuteronomy. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Deuteronomy. Chapter 16. Y'all know we, we've been dealing with the feast days. Uh -huh. Passover weeks and mm -hmm. tabernacles. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing some things God has set us to do. Mm -hmm. Spiritually. <laughs> Amen. Yes. But even in that, God determines the way. Is that right? Yeah. Look at the verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. Three times in a year mm -hmm. shall all the males appear before the Lord thy God. Where? In the place which he shall, he shall choose. In the feast of unleavened bread. In the feast of weeks. And in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before him empty. They will appear before the Lord in the place that he shall choose. Amen. Stay in the same time. If you back up to verse number two. The Bible says, Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and of the herd. In the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Amen. Amen. Look at verse number five. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee. 
but at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in. You, I, don't, don't just be out in the gates anywhere. Amen. Amen. I'll, I'll let you know. Yes, Amen. Where to be. Amen. 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 Verse, verse 7. And thou shalt not roast and eat in the and thou shalt roast and eat in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. All about the book. God is showing us. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what to do, but I'm going to tell you mm -hmm. where to do it. Thank you, Lord. Verse number 10. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks. Because we're just talking about Passover. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with the tribute of a free will offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God according to the Lord, or uh, as the Lord thy God has blessed thee. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy maid servant and thy maid servant. And the Levite that is within thy gates, yeah. and the stranger, yeah. and the fatherless, and the widow that are among you in the place which the Lord God has chosen to place his name there. Yes. Amen. 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 There's weeks. Mm -hmm. Then verse 13. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. After that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine, and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite, the stranger, and the fatherless and the widow that are within thy gates. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all the works of thine hand. Therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. And then he sums it up in the, in the verse that we read initially, verse 16. Three times a year shall all males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread, in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles. So God keep continually tell us what to do, and then he say, now I'm going to tell you where? where my name is. <laughs> Amen. Because you ain't just going to do it anywhere. And, and you're not just going to be somewhere mimicking folk that really carry my name and think you're going to get the results of them that are in my name. Where, where two or three are gathered. Yeah, that's where I'm going to be. And so, and, and so I will choose a place where my name is. Uh -huh. And that's where you're going to be planted. That's where you're going to flourish. That's where you're going to be the blessing that I intended for you to be. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Being, God, being where God tells you to be is of the utmost importance. Environment. So, so it's not just about being everywhere. That's right. That's right. It's not. It's not. It's not just everywhere you go, but rather everywhere He leads. Because He's going to guide you continually. Amen. If you go everywhere He leads, then everywhere you go will be blessed. Amen. I know I'm right about it. Yes. Look at 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. Amen. First Kings chapter 17. Beginning at verse 2, the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, turn thee eastward, 
and hide thyself by the brook Sharif, mm -hmm. that is before Jordan. Mm -hmm. This is God giving instructions to mm -hmm. Elijah. Yeah. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, mm -hmm. and I have commanded, are y'all reading with me? Yeah. Yeah. The ravens to feed thee what? There. Uh huh, there. Mm -hmm. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Sharif. That is before Jordan. Mm -hmm. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of uh, the brook. If you be where God tells you to be, that will be the Amen. 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 And if you where God tells you to be, if you live in the environment that God created for you to thrive in, he will be your supply.
He spoke to the ground. Didn't he do it? Genesis 1 and 11. He said, let the earth bring forth. Amen. Let the earth. He talked, he spoke to the earth. He said, let the earth bring forth. So he spoke to its environment before it came forth. When God got ready to create fish and whales, he spoke to the water. It's in mind. Verse 20. Genesis verse 20. Let the waters bring forth abundantly. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When God created animals, he spake again to the earth. Let the earth bring forth living things and creeping things that will creep upon the earth. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. He spoke to its environment. Yeah, yeah. And then he supplied the things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is with man. Yeah, man. You got to be in your environment. Yeah, yeah. And when God got ready to create man, he spoke to its environment. Yeah, yeah. He didn't speak to the earth until even though he created man out of the dust of the ground, he didn't tell the earth to bring forth. Yeah, yeah. He didn't speak to the waters yeah. and tell the waters to bring forth. He didn't speak to the firmament like he did for the birds and tell the sky to drop down. When God got ready to create man, he spoke to man's environment. He said, let us. Make man. Amen. Let us. You don't even know where your environment is. Amen. He said, let us. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. he placed Adam in the garden, but 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 the withdrawal of his presence uh -huh. is what caused man to die. Yeah. Yeah. Being out of your environment, yeah. although he created man of the dust of the ground, yeah. it's in his presence. Yeah. Well, that's fullness of joy. Yeah. It's in him that I live yeah. like creeping things on the earth. I move. Anywhere and have joy. Amen. 
Yeah. Long as I'm with him, I could be anywhere and be at peace.
Lord. Thy presence, Lord. Thy presence, Lord. Thy presence, Lord. Thy presence, Lord. Thy presence. Anybody feel that in there? Thy presence, Lord. Your 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 presence, Lord. When Saul got in trouble, he told Samuel, listen, I ought to be in front of the people. As long as I don't lose my stuff and my stuff. Uh, 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 uh. How about that? Mm, 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 mm. But when David got in trouble, yeah. he wrote the 51st Psalm. Yeah. And in that 11th verse, he said, Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. I don't care if you cast me out of this palace, but cast me not away from your presence. I don't
presence, God. Your presence, God. Your presence, God.